In this activity, you are going to use a state machine to simulate a three number combination lock. Now this particular combination lock has the numbers one, five, three, right? These are in binary. This is the binary number one, then the binary number five, then the binary number three. So if I enter these into my combination lock, I will enter a one by flipping down switch three and then I can clock it. And you can actually see that now I'm in state one. So I just entered a one. And now I will enter the next number of my combination, which is five. And again, I'll hit the clock up and down. Notice I'm clocking up and down. Now I've moved to state two. And the last number of my combination is three. So when I clock it up and down, you can see that my open is on, right? So I've opened the lock. Now, if I uh, hit another number and clock it again, you will see that it'll go back off. So again, the way this works is you will enter the number, hit the clock, and that'll take you to the next state. And if you've entered all three numbers correctly, the combination lock will open in this simulation and that'll be represented by a light coming on at the end. All right, let's look, how to, how, let's look at how to make one of these things. This is what the state graph looks like for my combination lock. Yours is going to look quite similar, except you're gonna have a different combination, of course. So if I start here in state zero, which of course in binary is a zero, zero, and this is my output, I'm outputting a zero. If I enter the correct combination, which of course was the binary number one, that takes me to state one, which of course in binary is a zero, one, still outputting a zero. If I enter the next correct number, in my combination, that's a five. It takes me to state two. And the third number that I'm supposed to enter is a three. That takes me to state three and I'm outputting a one. Okay, and then after that, anything that I enter is going to take me back to state zero, right? X, 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 I could enter anything and I'll go back to state zero. Now notice if I enter something that's not the correct combination, right? If I enter anything that's not zero, zero, one, that's a little not bar over it, I just stay in state zero. Likewise, if I'm in state one and I enter anything that's not the correct number, which is one, zero, one, it takes me back to state zero right here. If I enter anything not one, zero, one, I go back to state zero. And of course, in state two, same thing. If I enter anything that's not the correct number, I go back to state zero. So that should be pretty straightforward. And yours is going to look pretty similar to this, except you're going to have a different combination. This is the state transition table for my three number combination lock. Um, and you've seen very similar uh, state transition tables to this. Basically this says if I'm in state zero represented by a zero zero in binary and I enter the correct number, these are my inputs, right? If I, I'm looking for a one in binary, it will take me to state one, zero one. Well, if I wanna get to state one, the input to my uh, flip flops have to be one. Right, that's how D flip flops work. Whatever you input will be the output on the next clock cycle. So yes, once again, these two columns are going to be exactly the same as these two columns. And let me just say why that is again. Uh, whatever you want the output to be on the next clock cycle, that's what the input has to be for your D flip flops, right? So if I want a one zero to be output, I have to input a one zero. And then that, on the next clock cycle, that'll be my output. So uh, of course, if I'm in state zero and I enter anything that's not the correct number that I'm looking for, I go back to, or I, rather I stay in state zero. If I'm in state one and I enter the correct combination, the correct number, I go to state two. That's a two in binary. If I, anything else will take me back to state zero. If I'm in state two, right, one zero is a two, and I enter the correct combination, it'll take me to state three right, that my next state will be state three. If I enter anything that's not correct, I'll go back to state zero. And finally, here I am in state three, and it doesn't matter if I enter anything, remember those X, X, Xs, if I enter anything, I'll go back to state zero. But of course, while I'm in state three, I want to output a one because my combination lock has opened. Now yours is going to look very similar to this, except you're going to have a different combination to open your combination lock. So you're going to need five, uh, I'm sorry, just three equations, rather, just three equations. You're going to need an equation for dA, dB, and open. And that will just be um, like dA, I'll even tell you what that's gonna be. So dA is going to be on, right? I'm just, I'm just every place I have a one, dA is going to be a one when I have not QA, QB, X, not y and z. Or 
uh, for this next one, you've done this many, many times, or when I have uh, QA, not QB, not X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I think you get the idea. And so, of course, DB, I just, I'm just writing an equation for every place I see a one in terms of my inputs. And the same thing for open. That's going to be very simple for my open, right? It's going to be open, right? My lock is going to, the, the output light is going to be on when I have QA and QB. These are all don't cares. I don't, I don't need to worry about them at all. So my output is going to be very, very simple. And that's all there is to it. I think you should be able to handle it from here. So thanks so much for watching.